all day long in Radesh, Charlotte, making the tea sandwiches, making the puff pastries. Juliana was my strawberry cutting queen today. And there were loads and loads of strawberries, and John was a helper too. And then, you know, Susan helping with the punch, and all the kids, you know, helping in their own ways and decorating cupcakes. So thank you for the whole crew that made today possible. Opportunity in a bad situation. And what I mean by that is the old adage that we've all heard is when you're given, or what's the expression, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. So the story behind that is two weeks before Julia was born, so that was seven and a half years ago, Alex came home ex exceptionally early. It was about 4.30 in the afternoon. And at that point I knew that something was wrong because he normally doesn't come home till about seven. And the moment I, I made eye contact with him, I knew that something was wrong. And what had happened was that, you know, he had gotten let go from his company that day. And I'll never forget that evening, all five of my sisters called Alex. Nobody said, we're sorry, Alex, that you lost your job. Everyone called to congratulate him and said, congratulations, Alex. We know you're going to do something great. And this is going to be the next step to, to whatever it is that you're going to do. And that really is what happened. That was the impetus to him starting Loma Vista Medical in a true Silicon Valley style in our garage, you know, like the Hewlett Packard Company was started in their garage in Palo Alto. And, you know, that was a way that he turned a bad situation into a very positive situation. So that's the first story and the first lesson. The second lesson that I saw that Alex, you know, showed me while he was building his company is being adaptable. And I remember very clearly a standing outside of the garage door and Alex initially started the company as a colonoscopy company and I remember at the time we laughed we were standing outside the garage door and I said Alex I bet mark my words you're something some technology is going to come out of this colonoscopy but it's not going to be the colonoscopy that's going to make you successful or that's going to be the success out of the company and sure enough as Alex was developing the next generation colonoscopy device, as he was working with composite fabrics to, to roll out the, the colonoscopy that would the colonoscopy tube that would roll out inside of inside of the human being, he came across and started generating these composite fabrics, which then turned into composite balloons, which is what the company was sold for. So that's the second lesson is you know always maintaining and being adaptable in, in situations. <coughs> And then lastly, the third lesson is always be resilient. And yesterday we were really fortunate to have one of Alex's uh, employees, he was employee number three, and he applied to business school last year at Harvard and he, and he was accepted. So he came up for the day yesterday. And as he was leaving, I took him aside and I said, Paul, you know, is there any story you would like me to share with everyone tomorrow since you can't be here? And so I just jotted down some of his comments, and, and really it's a story about resiliency. So what he said was the following, no one else could have pulled it off. No one is that focused, that relentless, and resilient. There were so many moments when we could have been discouraged, and he never was. So I think the reality was, I'm sure, I, and I know, I mean, there were the sleepless nights where he was discouraged, but as a leader, I think the face he always led with was very resilient, um, and, and that's what the team needed because even weeks into the deal, their balloons were having problems. And this was a big deal because the deal is not going to close if they can't show that the, that the balloons are working, the next generation balloons. And I, you know, I think Alex did a really good job of being resilient, rallying the team, and getting everyone to fix the problem and get the deal done. So with that, I uh, just wanted to say you know, how proud I am. Um, it's been a long seven and a half years, and he's worked harder than anybody I know. You know, 12 hours a day, six to seven days a week. And if anybody deserves a success, Alex, you do. So, congratulations. Great. Okay. Um, 
Thank you. So the next person up is James. He just wanted to say a couple words too. So I just wrote a poem for my dad on this special day. Rewards in Life by James Tilson. I'm really happy that my dad sold his company. He worked so hard, and now he gets his reward. My dad always told me to give everything my best effort. I think his words will support me in life. Alex is the best dad and the only dad I'll ever have. I hope that more and more rewards will come to him because he's always worked so hard. Mary. <laughs> too much money, it doesn't make any difference what happens at the end. So um, so this issue came up just when we bought the strawberries. <laughs> uh, we were going to buy a lot of strawberries because I was going to help out. We were buy and the issue was whether we buy the quartz from Spring Ridge Farm, $8, or whether we go over to the other place and buy them in California for $5. And, and Deborah said, uh, I know what Alex would do. No doubt <laughs> I'm going to take the big risk and go for, <laughs> go for the biggies. Uh, and just on the history, I mean, I, doesn't the product go back even further to the to the water-saving toilet? It was <laughs> exactly. So we go okay, from the water-saving toilet to the do-it-yourself <laughs> colonoscopy to the, the device on the back, and then and I agree, just dropping ideas that weren't quite right for the time. Although I still have visions of Alex going back to the water-saving toilet and having the governor of California, you know, clip a banner or something because you will save so many. Uh, so many gallons. But I'm, I'm here in really two capacities. One is a happy shareholder. <laughs> with Renata. And the other with Renata is just a really proud, proud parent because uh, you mentioned a lot of the things, but just, you know, from 500 miles north, uh, you can just see one thing after another. And I just am astounded at, at, at all the kind of the right steps or when there are wrong steps, that the right steps were taken. And also, the loyalty, Alex, I think we only had one employee uh, in this whole time leave. Now, if you could come in, get work these kind of hours, uh, and everything got one employee leave during that time. And there was something special about him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the employees are, are being taken care of in a generous way at the, at the end. But I'm just, we're just tremendously proud of you, so great job. Yeah. We always knew Alex was destined for great things when we got roadkill calendars for Christmas. <laughs> 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 from the middle of February. <laughs> so, uh, I'm thankful that um, some of my earliest investors are here. Uh, when, I, when I first uh, did our first fundraising, um, Whitney and Mom and Dad all jumped in, and um, that meant a lot to me. And uh, um, uh, they came in for subsequent rounds as well, so I, I'm lucky to have had that to, to kick things off. Um, uh, along the way, um, anyone who knows, um, you know, we started off in the garage. Uh, it was it was cold and dark, and things weren't working, and we were just spending our money. I was just spending. I had I think a two month severance after getting fired, so I went through that pretty quickly. I was going through my 401k. Anyone who knows Deborah knows that she likes she likes. Fashionable thing. She's a fashionable thing. And so she'd go to the store and get a purse that was, I don't know, $250. Like, that's ridiculous. $250 for a purse? Do you already have a purse? Meanwhile, I'd be back spending $15,000 on a prototype that didn't work. And it would come from the same bank account. So I'd have to explain that. She, she all the way along was very, very patient. And um, uh, she could have said, this is crazy. This isn't going to work. Um, uh, we're spending all of our money. Um, what's going to become of this? Um, but she didn't. And through um, a lot of ups and downs, um, we could have died many, many points along the way. Um, she was supportive. Um, she, uh, we had co-workers uh, working at her garage, having lunch in the house every day. 
Um, uh, we burned through an enormous amount of our savings. Um, I had no income for a long time and enormous hours where I might say, sorry, I'm coming home at eight or nine again tonight because it's not working and we need to fix it. And she was very supportive and through you know, not just one, but then two. Julia was born at the same time that the company was born. So Julia was born at home and the company was born in the garage. So they were literally, <laughs> born, they were literally the born on the other side of the wall. They were born at the exact same time on the other side of the wall. I think of them. Often in analogous terms. Something that has enormous potential, but sometimes rough along the way. Um, uh, you see this incredible thing they can do to change the world, but along the way, sometimes rough. <laughs> and um, uh, and um, Deborah's been enormously supportive through the whole thing. She didn't have to be in when it, again, when it wasn't always the least bit obvious. And um, I'll always be thankful for that. Yay! Yay. Yay.